Hello, Admiral Thrawn here. I am making a video that will basically show off some of the early uh, content for my upcoming mod called the Marinese Knot. Uh, this will be a mod that takes place in Slaver's Bay, and it will be it's basically it'll be more heavily scripted than my previous work, Age of Petty Kings. It'll cover Daenerys' campaign there, and hopefully it'll be interesting. So yeah, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what it's going to what it's going to contain. I'll just start right now. This is a really early version of the mod. There's going to be a lot of work that gets done later on. So for now, this is just what we have. Um, but yeah, the, the factions will be Daenerys Targaryen. She will start. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be just after her sack of Yunkai. So I'll have to actually move this, um, like the the sigil here, to be further up. Um, she'll start off as a nomadic faction, but when she captures a settlement, obviously that'll change. Um, then there'll be King Cleon the Great, the Butcher King. He will have Astapor, he'll have just taken over. He'll be able to recruit his new Unsullied, but they won't be very good. Uh, you'll have new Gis with their Giscari legions and all, they'll be, they'll be pretty badass. You'll have Marine itself, like, which will be a, probably one of the stronger factions, though it'll be up against Daenerys, so they'll have a hard time of it. Uh, you'll have the Valyrian League, which is um, Tolos, Montaris, and Illyria, which are these three cities over here, which are basically, they're sort of pseudo-Valyrians, they aren't really Valyrians, but, yeah, no dragons or anything like that. And then finally, Yunkai, Daenerys' arch-nemesis, which will be right in here. So, yeah, I'll just give you a look at the map. The map is pretty much done at this point, but, uh, you know, I'll play as, how about Marine? Um... As you can see, this is really early on. You can still see the Age of Petty Kings logo here, and I'm going to have to change all of that. I am basing this, like, I'm using Age of Petty Kings as a base. However, I'm removing basically all the content, so it's just going to be um, the, uh, like, uh, it's basically going to, the only, the only old content from the original game is going to be the, um, like, the ability to have more factions and all. Right now I only have, like, five factions, but I might expand that to more later on, and want to have up to 30 if I really want to, so, yeah. So anyway, anyway, a lot of people sort of um, basically yeah. If you're wondering if your content if your content that you put into Age of Petty Kings is, Petty Kings is going to be in this, it's not. So don't worry about any of, any of that. This is basically this is all me and people who have contributed work to who who have contacted specifically about this. Speaking of which, um, I'll be showing off some of the new units or at least one of them, which looks really cool thanks to Hannibal X Machina. You get to see that in a second. But yeah, so. Uh, right now, I've done most of the mapping and all that. We have Marine up here in the corner, obviously. Uh, it's a huge city, but the strat models right now only show it as being really tiny, so I might make some new strat models. I have to figure out how to do that first, but if I can, then I might. Um, and then there's Yunkai here. This is Daenerys. She right now, she right now looks like a Grey Iron General, but I'm going to have to... I'm going to change that, like I said, earlier version. And then there's Astapor over here. We have Valyria down here, which is, you know kind of a mess. You don't want to go there. And you actually, you actually can't go there. I made Valyria inaccessible, so you can't just like go colonize it, which seems... Which, it, it seems kind of out of place for Valyria to, Valyria to be colonizable or whatever. So yeah, all of this is inaccessible, so I don't bother trying. And then over here you have Tolus, Montaris, and Illyria, which are basically these three uh, trading cities here on the, um, on the side of Slaver's Bay. They have good skirmishers and all that, but otherwise they're not terribly powerful. And yeah, that's what I have so far. One thing I'd like your input on is, oh, by the way, there's new Gis down here as well. They're going to be one of the more powerful factions in the game, and they'll have one of the best armies. Um, so yeah, one thing I'd like to have some input on actually is this. Uh, in terms of the actual story, these are basically the only cities here. These are the only major settlements and whatnot. And uh, I'd say it makes sense from a gameplay point of view to only have a couple of big settlements because that way they're more valuable. And so it's like instead of k taking castle after castle after castle, it's basically just um, like I'm, I sort of there's like one key urban center I have to take. However, I might add a couple of like towns out here in the hinterlands. And I was wondering, should I do that? Should I not do that? So I'd like your inputs on that. Sort of like basically get, give at least some reason to go and try and control like this hinterland over here and all that. But, yeah, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the plan mechanics and all that, Daenerys will start out with a big army of Unsullied and Freed Slaves uh, right around here. Uh, and she'll basically be marching on probably Marine. And the problem with her is that her Unsullied, basically, they can't get rebuilt. So they're super overpowered, but they also die really quickly. And so, yeah, you don't want to basically waste them. 
So what she wants, so basically with Daenerys, it's going to start off with a huge army of Unsullied, but as time goes on, they'll slowly be replaced by her freemen, which are going to be trained into reasonably effective combat units. So basically by the end of it, the, by the late game, it'll be Daenerys with a huge army of freemen and maybe a couple of Unsullied left over. Um, as for everybody else, they'll have basically much weaker armies. The new Unsullied of Astapor, like Cleon's troops, they will be mediocre at best. Not, not all that good, but what can you do? Um... Then Yunkai will have lots of slave soldiers, but they will basically suck. Their army will be terrible. Uh, but however, if you're playing as Yunkai, you will be able to get some, um, like, you will be able to A, hire mercenaries, which may or may not betray you, and B, you'll be able to pro probably have a script where you'll basically get access to, like, say, some Carthian units and whatnot, because the, a lot of allies sent Yunkai troops during the war because the Yunkai, Yunkish army sucked. But yeah, apart from that, um... Oh, well, but one more thing, like these here, like the horns of whatever, uh, I, forget the, well, I forget what it's called, but that's where Cleon lost the huge battle against Yunkai. But, uh, yeah, I'm still working on getting the coastline uh, fixed to make the arrow thingies work and not be, like, looking really ugly there, as you can see. Um, yeah, Daenerys, she'll have a script for marriage in which she'll basically get, like, six or seven different marriage offers. Like, she'll get one from uh, Dario, one from Jorah, one from Quentin, one from Hisdar, one from, uh, what was his face? One from Pia, or the Tsar was on Doxos, the, like, the Carthine guy. One from Victoria. And basically, each, each offer, like, if you're playing as Daenerys, you can accept or reject it. If you accept, you get some really nice stuff from each of the various offers, with the exception of Jorah and Quentin, who give you nothing at all. Because poor Jorah and poor Quentin, they're sort of friend-zoned. But, um, if Daenerys accepts an offer, or for that matter, if she, if she rejects an offer, basically all the offers she doesn't accept, lots of bad stuff happens to her. So, like, for example, if she refuses if she refuses Victorian and all, the Ironborn will fight against her. If she refuses, uh, like, Zaro, the Carthine will send troops against her. If she refuses... Um, but basically, yeah, you, you get the idea. If she refuses his star, then some bad events happen in Marine. Stuff like that. So basically, she has to sort of be careful about what sort of game she wants to play, and then choose the marriage option based off of that. And yeah, that's just about everything. Um, it's coming along rather nicely. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you uh, the Unsullied here. They look really cool. These here are thanks to Hannibal X Machina. Right now, we it's basically... I've done most of this, but the units will be mostly made by Hannibal. I'll probably make some myself as well. Um, the people who made Essos Total War, um, like specifically Corpse Corps, I believe, uh, they, they, they put in some sweet work as well, uh, in terms of, like, names and whatnot. And then the team for Europa, Europa Barber Arm is letting me use their Slinger models, which is pretty awesome of them, too. So, yeah, thanks to all of them. You should go rep them if you're on Total War Center or whatnot. And if you're not, then go on Total War Center and rep them. And, yeah, so, yeah, these here are the Unsullied. They're the only unit that I actually have in the game right now. I'm going to obviously have a whole lot more than this. But, yeah, you can see, like, the spiked helmets and all. I'll probably make the spears a little bit longer. But, yeah, this is Hannibal's work, so great job to him. And, yeah, the banner is a work in progress. But, yeah, uh, that's all for now. I'll be releasing more previews as work continues and all. Probably a more thorough units preview for the various factions as well as various other things that I happen to make. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and that is it for the Marinese Knots. Uh, I'll be seeing you soon about more updates. Admiral Thrawn, signing off.